The 80th surround to gain with comments like, well, if you pay 85 pence per kilowatt hour, you'll be paying more than 20 pence a mile, and my petrol car at 50 miles a gallon only cost me 13 pence. EVs cost you more than petrol. I'm Dave, welcome to Dave Takes It On. I do use BP and Shell and others, and I only pay six pence a mile. The average EV motorist drives for around three pence a mile. Now, these statements by EV critics make one huge mistake. So what are these ICE drivers on about? OK, first, what follows will be actual receipts and screenshots of what I actually did over the last 31 days. Not theoretical, not calculated, not making it look better, but actual reading. So here goes. I charge it home. I know you immediately shout, whoa, what about those who can't? Quick answer. BBC just reported that 40% of young adults can't afford to get onto the property ladder with the first new home. They're too expensive. Should we then ban all new houses and builds and sales because 40% cannot afford one? That's ridiculous. Forget that one. I find there are actually three groups of people. Some can charge it home. For them, an EV is a no-brainer. Many cannot charge at home, but can still drive far cheaper with an EV. Those I cover in a moment. While some cannot charge at home and an EV will not be suitable for them. Have patience. Things are changing. 70% of us can and do charge at home. So I'm going to concentrate on those first. I've got a Tesla Model S. It does three miles per kilowatt hour. New ones now do a lot more. Four miles per kilowatt hour. Mine's an eight year old car has an 82 kilowatt hour usable battery and with Octopus on their Intelligent Go tariff, which gives me off peak 11.30 to 5.30 each morning, uh, 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. So home charging for me gives me a cost of two and a half pence a mile. Oh, for those interested who claim they hike up the prices of standard tariff to compensate for the cheap rate, uh, the government cap standard variable tariff at the moment is 25p from the 1st of April and Octopus charged me 27p. Well, my energy use of presence is around 50-50, so I pay around 20 pence less off peak, but pay 2.8% more peak. I've just switched tariffs, so I don't yet have my exact figures. Previously it was 80-20. Either way, hardly an extortionate rip-off. Now I travel around the country filming charging sessions at various networks for our channel, so my mileage is not normal or average. I cover about 20,000 miles, about three times the average. So here are my actual data for the first 31 days. Oh, by the way, data is used correctly, both singular and plural. Data is or data are. Over the last 31 days, I've driven 1,101 miles and have charged my battery a total of 368 kilowatt hours, 75% done at home, 2% on Tesla superchargers, 23% on others. Meaning in this case, grid serve 79p, Fastnet 69p, and Swarco at 64p. All the figures are rounded up or down just for ease. Here's my total bill for the month. Home charging 309 kilowatt hours at 7.5 pence is £23.18. T-Bay supercharging 9 kilowatt hours at 40p, £3.87. Swarco 19 kilowatt hours at 64p, £12.16. Grid serve 29 kilowatt hours at 79 26 pound and three and fasten ed 1.88 kilowatt hours at 69p one pound 30 total 66 pound 54. Oh, first comment it cost me as much to top up as grid serve to cover about 90 miles as it did to charge it home to cover almost a thousand miles so this seems to be what the ice lovers are claiming but let's just dig a bit deeper I used 360 kilowatt hours and drove 1,100 miles, so it's an unrepresentative to just select the dearest single charger or the dearest 90 mile I drove. Let's look at the whole 31 days. So I spent a grand total of £66.54 charging my car for the 31 day period. During which time I bought 368 kilowatt hours, so 66.54 divided by 368 gives me 18 pence per kilowatt hour average, and the 66 pound 54 divided by 1,100 miles gives me 6p. You should immediately see where the EV critics have gone wrong. While they do have to drive to a garage and pay £1.45 per litre or £6.60 a gallon every single time they top up, we EV drivers don't. We have many choices, and we who can charge it home have an even additional choice. 
If I had been a total deadhead and charged all 1,100 miles with grid serve, paying 79 pence a kilowatt hour, I would have had to pay 368 times 79 is 290 instead of 66 pounds. But keep watching to see what someone who cannot charge at home would have had to pay. It's not what you think. Well, let me sum up the last 31 days. 66 pound 54, I get six pence a mile. Petrol car doing 50 mile per gallon would have used 22 gallons, which is six pound 66, that's 145 to get 13 pence a mile. That's over twice the price. And don't forget my EV is an uh, eight year old model and hopelessly inefficient compared to the new ones being made now. Stand by for all the old, outdated, disproved myths with howls of Ah oh, yes, but your car can only cover 100 miles before it needs to plug in and stick there for two hours while you wait around and other such drivel. Yeah, I'm going to give you my charging times. I spent two minutes charging at Fastnet while we were doing some filming to get the readings we needed for our video. I spent 10 minutes at Kern Lodge, Swaco, also while we were filming in the rain. I did 10 minutes at Tea Bay while we had a cup of tea and a cup of coffee and a toilet break and 25 minutes with grid serve at Southway Services while we had lunch. During the whole month we never stopped to charge the car. We charged when we stopped anyway. We did not encounter a single queue, nor a broken charger, nor did we ever sit around waiting while I car our car charged. Get those myths out of the way. So you cannot charge at home. Hold fire, don't get jealous. I'm very nearly there and some of those results for you are working out actually really cheaper than me charging at home. Uh, yeah, really. So, um, EV owners might learn a lesson here. You see, many people think you have to run it down to nearly empty. Only then do you charge it and you charge it up to 100% every single time you charge. That's, that's ridiculous. I do the exact opposite. If I'm on a trip and I'm stopping for lunch, I will always choose to stop where there is a suitable charger, whether I need it or not, preferably a supercharger. And I charge for only as long as it takes me to eat lunch, even if that means I set off with 43% or 68% or 72% or 92%. It doesn't matter. Rarely do I ever need to drive to the full range of my Model S before I need to stop. As I get older, I stop more often now than the car. Even plugging in for five minutes it takes for me to walk to the toilet and back can add over 50 miles. One toilet break and one lunch stop can add well over 150 miles at absolutely no inconvenience to you at all. It costs no more to charge once for five minutes or once for 25 minutes than once for 30 minutes. I'm stopping anyway. And one last thought for you average mileage drivers who can charge at home. Just realise that with nearly 300 mile range these days, you can do most day trips out to the beach or national park and back again at your cheap 7.5p rate. Only on longer journeys like road trips would you need to resort to public charges. So if you only ever use public charges once or twice a year and then choose a silly price of 79 or 85 pence, your cost per kilowatt hour average out over the year is still likely to be less than 10 pence a kilowatt hour. That makes three pence a mile. Amazing, isn't it? Forget the spot price. Look at what it costs you for a whole year's EV charging. Now I said I would get back to those who cannot charge at home. Here we are, a whole section dedicated just to you that cannot charge a single kilowatt at home. So first, if you can't charge at home, can't get an EV. How oh, stupid argument. Let's have a look at that. Ignore that. Let's see what happens. Let's take the most economical popular EV in the world. No, that's not the Model uh, Y, it's the Model 3. Model Y was just a tiny smidgen less economical, but about the same. They use around 221 watt hours per mile, which is about 4.52 miles per kilowatt hour. And by the way, these are all official figures, just like petrol and diesel ones I quote earlier, neither will regularly give you in the real world the efficiency they quote. They all lie. OK, but close behind the Tesla was a clue that was a shock to me, and that was the Vauxhall Corsa. That's rated at four miles per kilowatt hour. And the Dasher Spring, this is a £15,000 brand new EV, giving you almost exactly four miles per kilowatt hour. As does the Renault 5 EV when it launches. You don't need to buy a really expensive EV to get good efficiency. Now, further down the list of cars such as the VW i4, three and a half miles, BMW iX4, three miles, 
Mercedes EQS and the classic VW Buzz and Polestar well under th three miles heading down towards Revelation of the Air, the hugely expensive Lotus Electra. And it hits in a, sh a massively poor two and a half miles per kilowatt hour. It's shocking, but many of my viewers pointed out you don't buy a Lamborghini or an Electra to save money on fuel. To cover the average 8,000 miles a year at 4 miles per kilowatt hour, you need 2,000 kilowatt hours of electricity. And if you go to GridServe, that'll cost you 2,079p, £1,560. But why are you going to GridServe? There are several EV charging networks that charge considerably less and a number with memberships even lower. One even lower than I can charge back at home. Uh, back to them shortly. What would a petrol car cost? Well, not using my own samples, I asked the Cars Guide website and cross-referenced this with CarWow to list comparable models to petrol, diesel uh, for the Model Y. They include things like the Audi Q5, Jaguar F-Pace, Land Rover Discovery, Mazda CX-8, Mercedes GLC, GLA, GLC, uh, Volvo CX-60, VW Touareg. Well, these are all in the same price range and comparable size. I have com uh, average combined fuel, cons fuel consumptions between about six and a half and seven and a half litres per hundred kilometres. That's between 35 and 40 miles. These are not my figures. You can make up your own figures if you like, as many of the EV deniers will. You know, my old diesel Golf does 85 to the gallon on the good run, you know the sort. Uh, but these are the official figures from trusted sources like CarWow, uh, which have really similar figures to Cars Guide. So let's cover 8,000 miles in one of those comparable cars. Not a tiny, cheap micro mini. This is one doing 40 miles per gallon, and you'll buy about 200 gallons at six, six pounds 60 a gallon. It's 1,220 pounds. So already that's 240 pounds cheaper than the EV they shout about. However, if you don't use the dearest EV chargers, you can find, but instead choose a cheap one, say EV Point, they charge 65 pence, or Fastnet, 69, or Tesla, around about 45, 50. All without paying for memberships, your annual charging costs using ultra rapid chargers only could be down at 900 pounds if you got Tesla, 1300 if you got Fastnet or EV Points. These are both cheaper than petrol. Or you could choose one of the thousands of fast chargers. GridServe, for example, charge 49 pence per kilowatt hour. Tesco, 44 for the fast 11 kilowatt chargers. They're slower, but they're even cheaper. So all of that is now cheaper than a petrol car at 40 miles per gallon, with no home charging at all. So who said an EV was dearer? Well, just because the critics base their prices on per kilowatt hour at the dearest public charger they can find in the whole country, which absolutely charges 85 pence. Anyway, an EV only ever charged the public charges is dearer only if you choose to use the dearest charges in the country and do not take advantage of any of the offers open to you. What do I mean? Hyundai, BMW, you'll get a discount on charging for the first year down to about 30 pence a kilowatt hour, making those about 700 pound. That's half the price of a petrol car. That, by the way, will also cover you for the next two years against the extra cost of petrol. But Buy a Vauxhall EV and you currently get one year totally free charging at Tesco's. Buy a Nissan Leaf or Aria and you get unlimited free charging at Nissan dealers. Become a member of a charging network and even allowing for the monthly subscription, you get prices around about 50 or 60 pence. Look at, uh, well, Fastnet, Ionity. You cannot get free petrol for a year anywhere I know of. However, for you petrol drivers, for you to keep your warranty intact, you need to uh, have a service. You're forced to. You'll need one at least once in the first year. That's the rules. They cost at least £250 from any dealer, com considerably more for some cars. And in the second year, that will now be a major service and that will be much nearer £500. So all of your petrol fuel savings are already eliminated. As you may have gathered, EVs do not require mandatory servicing to maintain the warranty. But of course, there are other benefits. You see, buy a cheaper Mercedes GLA and it will only cost you about £180 in road tax. Get a model over £40,000 and you pay an additional 390 expensive car tax. Again, screams of outrage from April 2025. EVs will also pay road tax. Absolutely, but have they actually seen the rates? They may be decided, there's no guarantee they're not going to change, but they are an absolute eye-opener. 
See, I'm using figures here from the RAC who claim that the latest regulations coming out of the government are, for 2025, a new EV under £40,000 pays the first year £10 a year, the lowest rate they do, and then the second year onwards £190. Not bad. A new EV over £40,000 will pay the first year the same, but they also pay the supplement expensive of £410. And that is in line with all new cars. In other words, our current EV advantage will be reduced to the first year only for new cars, but they will be no dearer than an equivalent petrol or diesel car. In fact, quite the opposite, because the EVs, when they drop into normal road tax range, will always be in the very lowest tax bracket you can possibly find. So you could buy a £39,000 Model Y, uh, which drops into the £10 bracket. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. It's not as bad as people think. So... We're looking then, currently the Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive is 39990 I suspect the Model Y will drop to a similar figure next year to give you the lower tax rate, uh, both in the first year and subsequently. But recently I got a flurry of comments about getting quick, tax your car before April 1st, 2025. You'll get an extra year's free. And it's true, but under the current regulations, EV registered between 2017 and 2025 will pay the standard rate everybody else pays of £190, except me. EVs registered between 2001 and 2017, like mine, will pay band B, or just £20 every year. Wow, I really must out rush out and flog it quickly before this comes in. £20 a year, I will take that for road tax. Well, insurance you'll find is largely the same, whether it's petrol or, or EV. Uh, some dearer, some cheaper, depends on your circumstances. So in general, an EV will cost you no more than a new ICE car to insure. Just not a lot less. And the same applies to fuel. If you don't shop around, you can pay as much or more as a petrol car. Now finally, but by no means least, there's leasing and salary sacrifice schemes which make an EV significantly cheaper to obtain than comparable ICE cars on the road. You could save hundreds of pounds a month getting your car onto the road with a salary, salary sacrifice scheme that's going to save you far more in a year, could save you £2,000 in a year or more over and above what the petrol will cost you. So, summary for the last 31 days using public charges up to 79 pence per kilowatt hour for 23% of the time, I actually average 6 pence per mile. The average 8,000 mile a year EV owner who uses home charging and occasional public charges less than I do uh, could average around about 3 pence a mile for the year. The average EV driver who cannot charge at home could spend anywhere between absolutely nothing at all for the whole of the year up to about 10 pence a mile while the average petrol motorist would pay between 13 and 16 pence a mile. 16 pence a mile is the 40 mile to gallon figure, which is comparable. And they can't get any special offers, special deals, cut price off their petrol. I only ever fill up at dear charges very infrequently when I have no choice, and then I will always fill up at the least expensive of those. Petrol drivers have to fill up at whatever price it is. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you'd like this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe. It makes really a huge difference to us. And for those who want to support us further, have a look at our Patreon membership. You get extra goodies besides helping us. I'm Dave.